If you love a good rotisserie chicken, this is your chance to make a great roast chicken at home. I'm gonna take you through each step of the way to make sure it's seasoned, tastes amazing. This citrus and herb chicken is gonna be on your roster and let's make it together. Everyone needs a good chicken in their back pocket, whether it's for a weeknight meal or for a weekend meal, having people together. And this citrus and herb roasted chicken is one of my favorites. It's super simple. And to get started, we're gonna make a salt brine or a salt rub. Now, it's kind of like dry brining, but the great thing is even as little as 30 minutes will make a difference or up to four hours. So don't feel like you need to make this way ahead. If you only have 30 minutes, put it on there for 30 minutes, put it in the fridge, and it will still have a ton of flavor. So to start, we're going to infuse salt with flavor. Now that's gonna start by using some good kosher salt. Now I always use kosher in all my recipes, which means it's a bigger grain of salt. And you do need to know that because it measures differently, even depending on the brand sometimes, than table salt. So if you use just table salt in place of kosher salt, it'll be a lot more salty. But what salt will do with the meat is actually add a ton of flavor, which is super important. So like I said, this has citrus and we're gonna use a lot of citrus. And what we're doing is taking that beautiful bright color off the outside of the citrus. Now, I will always for this buy obviously organic citrus because I'm using the skin. I will also wash them really well, sometimes even drop them in boiling water if you think they have that wax coating on them, just to make sure you feel good about using all that beautiful flavor, which smells amazing. This is where the essential oils are. So we're just gonna knock it over right in there. And then what we're gonna do is add to it orange zest. So orange and lemon together, oh, they add so much brightness. And what we're doing, instead of just adding the juice onto the chicken, which wouldn't really actually add a lot of flavor, we're adding the essence of those oils right into the salt, which is gonna help pull those oils into the chicken and actually infuse that meat with this flavor. And that to me is what's really more important here. So you can see, I'm just holding it upside down and that just catches all of that citrus all of that zest. I'm just gonna pick this up here so I can bang it in a little bit easier. Now it's all in there. It's beautiful. So to that, we're gonna add, of course, a few other things. We're gonna add a little bit of black pepper, just for a little bit of that traditional spice, not hot spice, but just a little bit of spice. For a little bit of heat, a small amount of cayenne. This to me, just it wakes everything up and it works really well with the citrus. A little bit of one of my favorites, smoked paprika. You could use regular paprika but the smoked obviously has that smoky flavor. And that to me is super important in this. Then I'm gonna take some garlic. And usually within a brine, I would use a dried garlic, but here I'm gonna use fresh and I'm gonna press it through. What that's gonna do is open up all of its cell walls and really just immensely add that flavor. Look at that. So it will work into the salt much better and into the chicken. So we're just gonna Push that off of there. And then to finish all this up, I'm gonna chop up and mince some herbs. So I have some thyme and some fresh rosemary. We're actually getting back to the time of year where I can have my rosemary outside. I have it inside over the winter, but now I can actually just get outside and grab some of it, which is my favorite. So both of these have an amazing ability to just marry with the citrus perfectly. So you have that beautiful, almost Mediterranean quality with the rosemary and the thyme, and I'm mincing them just because I want them to be able to work into that salt. We're gonna just rub it together. So what I'm gonna do is grab them right here, throw them right in there, and then we'll mix this all together. I'm just gonna work it together with my hands. So the salt is almost as an abrasive. It acts as an abrasive, and so it really will infuse with all these flavors we're putting in here. That's the citrus, the herbs, and instantly you're getting this sandy, almost wet sand texture. Do you see that? And that is exactly what you want. This is how everything is working together just perfectly. And it's kind of breaking down the essential oils and everything. And just, if you could smell this, that slight smokiness with the citrus is a combo that I think you're gonna love. It's actually one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna wash it off my hands, let that sit there so we can focus on the chicken. So I have a really beautiful roasting chicken. You'll find them in different pounds, so you can always adjust for whatever you can find. Obviously a good quality, a well-grown chicken is gonna have more flavor. You know, what you feed a chicken is how it tastes in the end. You want a well-raised one to know it's worth that. So what I'm gonna do is take my chicken, which the giblets are out of it. Always check to see if you have any giblets. If it came with giblets, you wanna make sure you take anything on the inside out. And if there's any extra skin around here or the neck, I will usually trim that off just like I would a turkey. 
So now what we're gonna do is, I wanna make this more for a weeknight, which means we want it to roast quicker. So that's gonna be removing the backbone and spatchcocking it. Now you can sometimes use a knife if you have a good enough one, and you can actually just chop through because it's pretty tender back here, and you can see how easy it is just to actually go through those and be able to just chop it out. That's one way to do it. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can take a knife and you can just do it that way too. It's a, it just depends what your comfort level is. But I think instead of being scared of doing this, Feel confident and just take a scissors if you've never done it. And once you do it, you're gonna realize like, oh, this is nothing and you can do it. It's that easy. So what we do wanna do is we will save this backbone. This is great to use in your homemade stocks. If you haven't made homemade stock, <laughs> this is your time to do it. So what I am gonna do is flip this back over and we're going to flatten it out somewhat to an even layer. This just makes it easier, one, to cook and to work with. If you notice here, we wanna break the bone right here just to open that up, and then we can press it down. So once you've it pressed down, you can kind of lay it out a little bit better, and this is gonna help it just cook evenly. That's the beautiful thing. See how beautiful now that is? So we're cutting the roasting time almost in half just by doing this. So now, just like I would if I was gonna do my Thanksgiving turkey, I'm gonna start working my finger underneath the skin and separating it slightly from the meat. This is a step you don't have to do, but if you do this, you're gonna have crispier skin and we're gonna be able to put that salt rub underneath directly onto that meat, but leaving the skin so the skin will still give us all that crispy flavor. So this to me is anytime you just wanna up your game a little bit, same at Thanksgiving, we're doing, gonna do the same thing, but just go in and start separating that skin from the meat and that's gonna give us crispy skin and a place to put so much flavor. So I'm gonna finish doing this and then we'll add that salt. So now that all that skin is separated, and I was really careful not to tear the skin anywhere so then you have a nice presentation, we're gonna take that salt rub and we're just gonna start taking it and we're gonna put it under the skin and I'm gonna start rubbing that all around. And that means everywhere I was separating, I should be able to get in there and get that salt really good contact and rub it in. So the skin almost acts as this protection, which is nice because it really keeps it where you want it and you can start working it out to all these places. Now, if you're not a meat person, I understand. This is gonna be maybe like a big stretch for you. You can always wear gloves. But believe me, if you enjoy eating meat or choose to eat meat, you wanna make sure you prepare it properly and you wanna make sure it's good. And so that's what we're doing here. We're making sure it's all worth what we're doing. So I'm gonna get in all these crevices and then we can finish up. So I've also just put a little bit on the outside, not a lot, but I wanna flip it over one time here and put any remaining I have on the back here because you just wanna make sure it's seasoned all over with that salt, with that rub. That's everything now under the skin, a little bit on top. And we're gonna put it right onto a tray here and I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna put it right into my fridge and it's going to just sit for anywhere 30 minutes to four hours. The longer it sits, the more flavor it will have, but it will have good flavor either way, but we'll cover it and then we'll come back and we'll roast it. So we have our chicken that's been marinating, dry rubbing, just dry marinating in the fridge. And that's the wonderful thing, it has the flavor. And now I'm going to just quickly get a basting liquid ready. It's a butter, because you need butter when you have chicken. It really adds so much flavor. And instead of just adding it right away in the beginning or trying to spread butter on top, I like to do it as a basting. So I have some butter right here in a small little pan. And if you remember, we zested a lemon and an orange. I cut them in half and I have, you can see the zest is off it. And this is how we're gonna use more of it. So we're gonna put the lemon juice right in with the butter. We're gonna put some orange juice in. So what I love about this is we're using the same flavor but in different layers and in different ways. So we have the zest of these worked in with the salt that's infusing into the meat. Then we have the juice that's gonna be with the butter and it's gonna sit on top. So you have it in multiple ways, which I really love. To that, we're gonna add some thyme again. We used it in the chicken. We're gonna use it here on top too. And I like to just take those leaves, if you can, strip them right off. So they get right down in the butter. If you get little pieces in there, that's okay. We just wanna make sure we get it right down in there because, oh, it's just gonna add so much flavor. And then same with some rosemary again. I'm gonna just strip it off, put those leaves right down in there, and they're gonna infuse into the butter while it's melting. So I'll put it over like a really low heat on the stove and just let it slowly melt together. And this is gonna be our basting liquid that we'll put on after a little bit. So we have our chicken, it's been sitting and what I'm gonna do is just take it out. And we have a skillet. You can use a skillet, you can use a pan, you can use whatever works for you. I have a little bit of oil in there just to help it get going. Mostly the butter is what's gonna do it. I'm gonna just put the chicken in first, skin side down to get some of that oil on top and then set it upright. 
I'm gonna take the wings and I'm going to just put them right underneath. I think that keeps the tips from burning. And then just set it out so it can be somewhat even. That's all you need. And now I'm gonna wash my hands, but what I'll do after that is put this in, let it start roasting, and then we'll come back when I start basting it. So I just pulled the chicken out. It's only been in a few minutes, but you can see it's already starting to get a kind of a crust on top. But now I wanna take this melted butter. So we put all that mixture together. Look how beautiful that is. And we're just gonna start basting it on. So I'm gonna do this every, oh, you know, 10 minutes maybe, just to let it really start getting a beautiful crust and it will start making it so golden. And it will be adding so much flavor. And that's the important part. You can see how it's just gonna infuse more flavor right on top. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven. I'll baste it a couple more times, then we're gonna eat roasted chicken. Here is the beautiful chicken. Now, the important thing anytime you're roasting any type of meat is to let it rest when it comes out of the oven. If you cut it right away, the juices just fly out. It loses that moisture, you don't want it. Let it rest 15 at least minutes. It, there's a lot of residual heat in there that needs to slowly, slowly come down so the juices stay in. Remember the basting liquid, there's just a little bit left in the end, but I was slowly basting it on top, just brushing it, and look at that beautiful golden color it gets. I wish you could smell this. I'm just gonna taste a little bit right off right here. And this to me is such a beautiful way, like look at that skin, how gorgeous that is. This is why we took the time to actually, oh look at that. Get a little bit of the side bone in there, but oh, that is just beautiful meat. And you get that gorgeous like moisture to it. Guys. Mm, that's good. Oh, that is so good. I could literally just finish this. This is, I think we underestimate the power of a good roasted chicken. And what I mean by that is, instead of being dried out, instead of being tasteless, bland, Starts with a good chicken, and then we added immense flavor that did not overpower the chicken, but enhanced it. That citrus really comes through. I mean, look at that moisture. Just when I press on it, you get some moist, beautiful meat in there, and it has just enough of that gorgeous butter to the slight orange and lemon, neither of them overpowering to that herbaceousness from the rosemary and thyme. This is a beautiful roasted chicken, and it's one that I think you're gonna keep in your back pocket and make time and time again. I always say, follow this recipe the first time. If you wanna make changes later on, do that. You can change up the herbs, change up the flavors, but a good chicken's gonna go a long way. Leftovers, chicken salad, on top of lettuce salads, wraps, sandwiches. Serve it as is with a great salad, some potatoes, whatever you want. This is one for the books. So share it around, try this recipe, check my website, wiseguide.com. For all my recipes, including this one, enjoy, it's chicken time.